recorded. And let's begin again. Have your toys nearby. Let's start standing up with palms turned forward and a great big shoulder shrug. Inhale up, exhale back, head down. Palms stay forward, repeat, shoulder shrug. Inhale up, exhale back and down. One more time, great big shoulder shrug, a great big yawn. Inhale up, exhale back, head down. Lift up tall through the crown of your head, spread your fingers, spread your toes. And then with an inhale, stretch your arms overhead. Great big inhale up. And as you exhale, bend your knees, swan dive down into a forward fold. Take your feet a little wider apart and put your elbows on your lap. So elbows are on your lap. And hang your head. Press into your elbows to push your back up towards the sky. So really rounding your back. If you're familiar with cat and cow, you're doing like cat, standing cat. And try to maintain as much of this cat back as possible. And if it works for you, if you're lower, you have the option to begin to sway from side to side. Shifting your weight from one hip all the way to the other. Keeping a bend in your knees as you sway from side to side. Try to find your breath in your back body. And then once again, come to neutral, bend your knees, put your elbows on your lap, press into your elbows, round your back, tucking your tail, tucking your chin. Keep some support in your midsection as you find your belts, maybe pick them up off the ground. Bring them with you as you slowly press into your lap, hands on your lap, come all the way up to standing. So I think I'm going to start with my green belt, their highest contrast here. And you're going to unbuckle your belt. And we're going to put it on like a little jacket or a little vest. So my belt is unbuckled. I take it uh, over the top of my, uh, sorry, uh, underneath my ribs. like a little bolero vest, a little short vest. So take it over your shoulders. And then you've got two tails here. Cross the tails, snug down nice and tight. That's why having a long belt's handy. Snug down nice and tight. And if you have this situated properly, it's gonna pull your shoulders back, like a posture backpack. And then depending on how long the tails of your belt or you might just be able to buckle your belt. Now, if your belt's not quite long enough to buckle, well then you add to it, you do a double long belt. This is better if you can <laughs> see through your boobs <laughs> and work that buckle. And you wanna cinch up nice and tight, not to cut off circulation, but to keep those shoulders pinned back. Again, fall 2020 fashion show for you right here. Again, I started with that belt underneath the bra line. It came over the tops of my shoulders, crossed in the back, and then buckled around the front. Shoulders up, back and down. Lift up tall through the crown of your head, spread your fingers, spread your toes and breathe into your back body. Try to breathe into those crossed straps. Try to breathe into that spot between your shoulder blades. Try to break your belt. Big chesty breaths. Having this belt wrapped around your rib cage gives you something to breathe against. Now, if you're just not quite getting the belt to work properly for you, the shorthand, the easier version, is just to take that belt around your ribs and buckle it in front or tie a knot. 
And if that's absolutely not working for you tonight, if you don't have a belt at all, you can also use hands. To press in on those ribs, give you something to breathe into. So either breathing into the belt that's wrapped around your chest or breathing into your hands. Try to get some movement in your rib cage. And notice how you're able to take deeper breaths tied up. You've got something to breathe against. In fact, maybe you'll be able to cinch this thing up a little bit tighter after a couple of breaths. Big chesty breath. Now you're welcome to leave this on. If you have it on, you went through all that trouble of putting on, might as well just leave it on for a little bit. If you have a second belt available, might as well leave that posture backpack on. And we'll do a little bit of shoulder stretching. So that second belt, handy, nearby. And just drape that over your right shoulder. Palms forward, great big shoulder shrug, inhale up. Exhale back and down. And with this awareness, this band wrapped around your rib cage, you can think of your rib cage like a, a uh, lampshade. Think about tipping that lampshade so it points straight down. Try not to let any light escape forward. So front ribs are pulled in slightly. Back ribs really expand, broaden. Big shoulder shrug up, back and down, chest neutral. Lampshade shining straight down. And then take that left arm across. You can use that right hand to pull it across a little bit further. And breathe into that left shoulder. So the right hand is holding onto that left elbow, pulling the elbow across. And you're trying to pull your shoulders down and press your elbow into your hand, hand onto the elbow, and breathe. And release, and we'll do the same thing on the other side, taking that right arm across. You can use that left hand to pull it across a little bit further. Keep breathing. Each and every breath is a chance to try to break that belt. One more breath here. And then release. Once again, palms forward, great big shoulder shrug, a great big yawn. So then that belt, your spare belt, can go around your backside, almost as if you were putting it on like a belt. And you're gonna hold on to it about hip width apart with your thumbs, thumbs pointing out to the sides. Shoulders shrug up back and down, straighten your arms, curl your knuckles towards your body, and squeeze your shoulder blades together. And as you do so, try not to let your ribs poke out. Pull those front ribs in. Pull your elbows away from your body any amount at all. And keep on breathing. Big chesty breaths. You can tick tock your head side to side. Make sure your shoulders are down away from your ears. With a good strong grip on that belt behind your back, you can engage like you're trying to rip the belt apart. If my hands were to slip, you would see this happen. So really pull hard on that belt like you're trying to rip the belt apart. And at the same time, try pulling your arms away from your hips. And keep your knuckles curled towards the floor, your head on straight. Big rib cage press. And then release. Oh. So I've been here tied up for a while. I'm going to remove my posture backpack. But if you're really enjoying it and you have that spare belt, you can just leave this on all night if you feel like it. I'm starting to cut into my shoulders a bit. I had mine quite tight. I'm gonna stick with this green one for better contrast. I'm gonna take the belt out in front. Shoulders up, back and down. Arms straight out in front, hands about hip width apart. I'm gonna rev my engines, knuckles curl down. Lift my arms up. 
step back into frame here and engage like I'm trying to rip that belt apart. So there is a slight bend in my elbows. Even though my arms are overhead, as I try to rip that belt apart, it puts an elbow, a bend into my elbows. Keep your lampshade tipped down and do your best to rip the belt. Heads on level and straight. As you do this, there's a tendency for those front ribs to poke out by tucking those front ribs in like you're getting tickled. Put that lampshade so it shines straight down. Heads on straight, ripping that belt, ripping that belt. And then release. Arms, knuckles curl towards your hips. Rip the belt as you pull your arms away from your back. Now you can get a little gravity assist on this one. This is the second time around doing this. So everything I've described already, you're going to continue doing. You're going to continue to pull your hands apart. Hold on to the belt so they don't go anywhere. Try to rip that belt apart. Keep your shoulder blades down your back. Have a nice, long, elegant neck. And then if you want, you have the option of bending your knees, hinging over, and let gravity help pull those arms away from your back a little bit more. So knees to be bent generously, head hanging. We're doing this for the shoulders, not the legs. So bend your knees. Keep ripping that belt. And then slowly bring your hands back to your hips. And come back up to standing. And then return to the front. Once again, hold on to that belt. Ooh, that was a bloody mosquito right there. Yeah. Hold on to that belt about hip width apart. Shoulders up, back, and down, and rev your engines. Action here in the arms is to bring your arms overhead. And then break that belt. Keep your front ribs tucked in. And breathe. You might let out a little slack, so ease up for just a moment. Take your hands just a touch wider apart and then resume, ripping that belt, pulling your arms back a little bit further, keeping your head on straight. Breathing, front ribs tucked in. We're working on shoulder mobility, not upper back movement. So keep those front ribs tucked in so that this is a true shoulder stretch, not just an arch in your upper back. And then release. All right. Belt goes over your right shoulder. Inhale, both arms up and overhead. You can bend that right elbow. Give yourself a pat on the back. Reach across with your left hand. Push that left arm into socket. Plug it in. Then drag it behind your head. Keep plugging it in. Keep dragging it back behind your head. Again, front ribs and belly pull in. Practice like you still have that posture backpack on. Breathe like you still have that belt around your rib cage. And be mindful of where your ribs are in space. Again, resist the temptation to let your ribs bow forward. Pull your tummy in, maybe tuck your tail down a little bit. And then release. We'll repeat that one in just a moment. Big inhale, both arms up and overhead. This time you get to bend your left elbow, reach across with your right hand, plug that arm into socket, push it in, and then drag it behind. Keep pushing it in as you drag it behind. Front ribs and belly pull in, knees unlock. Keep on breathing. So in the month of October, my Wednesdays and Thursdays are going to be occupied with school meetings for my two kids. So I have to give up the Wednesday time slot. Tuesdays, I'm already teaching for UCSD. I teach Sunday mornings. So that pretty much leaves Sunday night, Monday night free or Friday. You might email me, let me know what you prefer, Mondays or Fridays in the evenings. And then go ahead, release. 
And let's switch them once again. Inhale both arms up and overhead. Bend that right elbow, give yourself a pat on the back. Plug that arm in, drag it behind your head. Hold on to that belt. Hold on to that belt. And then you can release that left hand down to also hold on to that belt. Maybe work your fingers a little closer together. And keep on breathing. Front ribs pulled in. And then release, and we're going to switch sides. So that belt goes over your. I'm all confused. All over your left shoulder. <laughs> uh, right, uh, it's on your left shoulder. Left shoulder. Arms up and overhead. Bend your left elbow. Give yourself a pat on the back. Pull that arm behind your head. And you reach down, find the belt. And then that right arm releases, comes up from below to also hold on to that belt. Front ribs and belly pulled in. And when you get a hold of that belt, you want to rip the belt. That might allow you to put your head on straighter. It's that action of gripping the belt and trying to rip the belt. Does a little stump into the shoulder so that you can put your head on straight. And then release. All right, so you still have that belt draped over your right shoulder. Big inhale, arms up and overhead. And exhale, release. Let your arms swing. Start crossing the right arm on top. Crossing that right arm on top, give yourself a great big hug. Drop your shoulders down away from your ears. Maybe tick tock your head side to side. Have a nice long neck. And then flip that bottom arm up and maybe wrap the top arm around it. Now, if your hands don't quite touch, you have that belt that you can use to fill the gap. Get a good shot there. Use that belt between your hands. Or if you do catch hold of fingers, go ahead, hold on with hands. Shoulders down away from your ears, elbows press forward. Breathe into your back. Breathe into that posture backpack. Breathe into your back ribs. And then release. And belt goes over the left shoulder, arms swing a few times. And then you get to cross that left arm on top. Give yourself a great big hug, fingers down below armpits, wrap up nice and tight. And then flip that bottom arm up, wrap the top arm around it. Again, if you're not quite touching, you can use the belt. Actually using the belt, you can kind of work it, like you're ripping that belt apart, loosen up the shoulders a little bit more, and then maybe you'll be able to catch hold of fingertips. Elbows pressing forward, waistline pulling back, breathing into those back ribs. And then release. So we're gonna repeat that one because we're gonna add gravity. So belt over the right shoulder once again, if you know you need it. Otherwise, if you don't need it, you don't need it. Crossing that right arm on top, give yourself a great big hug. Shoulders down away from your ears, long, elegant neck. Tangling your arms up, using the belt if you need it. And then add a little gravity here by bending your knees. Feet are part about as wide apart as a mat. Bend your knees, hinge over, and gravity will help pull those elbows away from your chest as you, with your knees bent, press your spine up towards the ceiling. So you're doing a little cat pose with eagle arms. Maybe a little wiggle too. Really getting a good spread in those back ribs. And 
and then knees bent, pull your tummy in, slowly come on up, then uncross, and do the same thing on the other side. So that would be crossing that left arm on top. Give yourself a great big hug, wrap it up. Use the belt to join your hands if you need it. And then you have that option of taking your feet apart, putting a bend to your knees, rounding your back like you're standing cat pose. As you let your elbows hang, push into that space between your shoulder blades, breathe into your back ribs. And you might consider wiggling around a little bit, shifting your weight this way and that way. And then really slowly come all the way back up to standing. Take a great big shoulder shrug. A great big yawn. Oh. Palms forward, great big shoulder shrug, great big yawn once again. No, oh, one more time. Great big shoulder shrug, a great big yawn. Oh. All right, going to need a couple blocks. I'm gonna take a block between your legs and a block will go between your hands in a moment. I'm gonna leave a block there and a block there for safekeeping because I'm gonna tie my arms together. I'm gonna to take your belt and tie it in a knot or buckle it in such a way that you have a shoulder width loop. I'm gonna tie your arms together to keep your hands for going wider apart than your shoulders. You want the belt that's shoulder width loop. So buckling up your belt, we're tying it in a knot. You want something that will hold your arms and keep them from going wider than your shoulders. The belt is gonna go above the elbows on the upper arm so that your hands are free to hold onto a block. Also got a block between your legs. You're gonna step your feet narrow. Put your feet about hip width apart, spread your toes. Keep a soft bend in your knees. Hands are alongside the block. Try to turn your palms to face you. So your thumbs point out to the sides. You're holding onto that brick with your pinky fingers and then shove your elbows wide. And as you shove your elbows wide, the belt's gonna prevent your elbows from going anywhere. And as you shove your elbows wide, try to breathe into that spot between your shoulder blades. Draw your shoulders down your back and breathe into that spot between your shoulder blades. And pull your arms into socket and breathe into that spot between your shoulder blades. And begin to press your fingertips towards the sky Keep breathing into that spot between your shoulder blades. Don't drop the brick, it's still between your hands. Pushing your elbows wide, pulling your shoulder blades onto your back. If you're still wearing that posture backpack, and you're pulling your front ribs in, trying not to let your lampshade tip up. And keep straightening your arms, pushing your arms up as far as you can. And do your best to keep breathing. Maybe take your thumbs out a little bit wider like you're hitchhiking. Let your thumbs definitely point out to the sides. And then release. Shoulders on your back. You get to repeat. You're still holding onto that brick between your legs. Knees are soft, light and bent. Those are spread. Thumbs are pointing out to the sides. You're holding onto the brick with your pinky fingers. Now shove your elbows wide. Pull your arm bones into socket. Push into your back ribs. Breathe into your back ribs. And then push fingertips straight up towards the sky. And you might not be able to take your arms completely straight. The closer you get your arms to straight, the more that your forehead will end up pushing against that belt. In fact, if you push your forehead against the belt, you can pull your front ribs and tummy in a little bit more. So 
you're pushing your third eye, your forehead against the belt, you're able to activate your abs a little bit more. Make sure your butt is relaxed. And then release. All right, third time's a charm. I bet you're wondering what this brick is about. Well, you're holding onto the brick between your thighs. You're gonna keep your knees bent so there's some awareness going on in the lower body. Arms out in front, shoulders down your back, thumbs pointing out to the sides, front ribs and belly pulled in. Try to break the belt. Push your fingertips towards the sky. You might end up pushing your forehead against the belt, pulling in your front ribs, pulling in your belly, and then bend your knees and sit down into a bit of a chair pose. And you definitely stay a little bit more upright in this chair pose than you would without all the bondage. And then come all the way up. So when you're sitting down into this chair, ideally you keep your torso more or less upright, just maybe a slight angle forward. Front ribs and belly pulled in, forehead pressing into the band, belly pulls in tight. Knees bend, keep holding onto that brick, don't drop it. And sit down into your chair pose. And then maybe come up and release. All right, let's take a moment to remove all the bondage, shake it out, feel the blood flow back in. Big inhale, arms all the way up. And exhale, let your arms float down. All right, we're gonna make our way down to the ground. So you might consider having a uh, cushion for your knees. And hopefully your belt is still buckled because we're gonna use the same exact shoulder loop thing and your blocks in dolphin pose. But first we'll do a downward facing dog. So the same shoulder loop belt going around those upper arms above the elbows. Fingers will spread wide on the ground. Fingers spread wide on the ground. You have to keep a slight bend in your elbows in order to push wide, push against that belt. So having that belt wrapped around your forearms keeps you from locking your arms out. So there's a slight bend in your elbows and you're pushing your elbows wide and they don't go anywhere. And you are on hands and knees. And as you push your elbows wide, can you soften your heart on that hammock between the goal posts of your arms? So melt your heart down between the goal posts of your arms. And then lift it up. And then soften it down. Arms stay straight the entire time. There's just a micro bend in the elbows. I keep pushing the elbows wide. I am lifting and lowering my heart. This is not a cat and cow. This is your heart riding an elevator and the rest of your torso coming along for the ride. A couple times, up and down. And then finally, have those arms straight, elbows pushing wide, shoulder blades on your back, heart melting down through your arms. And then you get to drop your head, curl your toes under, lift your hips up, back it up into a downward facing dog. Now there's really no good place for your head but you can press your head against that band and maybe pressing your head against that band will remind you to pull your tummy in a little bit. Keep that tummy pulled in, keep those front ribs tucked in even here in this downward facing dog. In fact, you have to fight against gravity a little bit more, keep those ribs from spilling light onto the mat. Bend your knees, lift your heels, flip your buns up towards the sun and keep those front ribs pulled in. There's your teeter totter, bend your knees, Lift your heels, flip your buns up towards the sun, and at the same time, keep your ribs from shining down onto the mat. Keep your ribs pulled into your body. And then you get to come on down. All right, elbows bend down to the mat. And you can interlace your fingers. What's nice is this band is gonna keep your elbows from going any wider than they are right now. So interlace your fingers. Your body's naturally gonna push out against the band so you really don't have to work that part of it. You're gonna let your head hang. Again, your head might end up pushing against that belt in just a moment. Your heart is softening through the goalposts of your arms. Head is hanging heavy. Toes curl under and you're gonna 
lift your buns up towards the sun. Let your head hang down through your elbows. And again, your head might end up resting in the hammock of that belt. Knees are bent, heels are lifted, perky buns up towards the sun. Ideally, there's no pressure on the top of your head because your elbows are narrow enough that your head does not pile drive into the ground. If your head is making contact with the floor, your belt is too wide. You want your elbows a little bit more narrow if you're doing a head stamp and then come all the way out and take a moment. Make that adjustment if you need to make that adjustment. Cinch up the belt a little bit more if you need that. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see the profile view. This is preparation for things like headstand. Now I'm not with you in person, so I would never have you guys do headstand over Zoom. I think any conscientious yoga teacher would not be teaching headstand over Zoom. <laughs> but be careful what you see on YouTube. All right, shoulders up onto your back. You're going to interlace your fingers. Elbows are on the mat. Again, elbows are no wider than your shoulders. Ideally, your elbows are a little narrower than your shoulders. That belt's keeping your elbows from going anywhere. You interlace your fingers and you soften your heart and you drop your head. And with your toes curled under, you flip your buns up towards the sun. Your head is right down through your elbows. I end up with my forehead, the top of my head pressing against that belt, which actually feels kind of nice. And it reminds me to pull my front ribs and tummy in. Push my forehead against something. It reminds me to pull my front ribs and tummy in. Knees are bent, heels are lifted, perky backside. Front ribs lifted up. And then come on down. And release. Let's come into a child's pose. And we'll come into this child's pose and begin to address the lower body a little bit more. We've done quite a bit for the shoulders already. Now we're gonna get into the hips and lower back. I'm gonna take that belt and I'm gonna tie my thighs together. And it's not the tightest belt ever. There is some space between my legs here. So I've tied my thighs together and I have the belt down near the knees, big toes together. Knees are a little bit apart. Got a couple of blocks out here in the front. You can use blocks or you can use stacked fists. You don't have blocks. And you're gonna come into a child's pose with your thighs tied together. And with your thighs tied together, this gives you something to push out against. So your legs are gonna go nowhere, but you're gonna engage like you're trying to press your thighs apart, especially the upper thighs. Try pushing your upper thighs wide while you were in that child's pose with your head supported. So in that supported child's pose, with your thighs tied together, you can really dramatically round your back. So I like to really put my head up on a, a, a nice stack of blocks to give myself plenty of support. So I can shift a lot of weight into my hips and dramatically round my back. Again, don't forget you got that belt to press out against. Try pressing your upper thighs wide. Forehead's pressing on something, so I tuck in my front ribs a little bit more. Maybe curl up a little bit more compact. Pressing forehead against something, tuck those front ribs in even more. You might find your elbows hanging. Keep pressing those thighs wide. Now, if you want your arms to participate in this thing, once you have your head situated in good position, plenty of support underneath your forehead, front ribs tucked in, pressing your thighs wide. You can press your hands into the mat and back it up a little bit more. Use your hands to back your hips up onto your heels even more. So you're trying to curl up into as tight a compact ball as you possibly can. And what's helping you get deeper into this curled up ball is that activation of the thigh bones, pushing your thigh bones wide, the upper thigh bones wide. And then release. I'm going to keep rolling. I'm going to roll over onto your back and I'm going to leave my thighs tied together. So I'm going to transition as 
gracefully as I can. I got that belt around my legs. I can just bring those legs in and cinch it up a little bit tighter. Not to cut off circulation, just to hold the legs together. And shift your weight from side to side. Now you notice I tuck the pillow underneath my head so I can breathe comfortably. And the belt's holding my legs together for me. So I can just rock from side to side, really massage across your backside. And then use your hands, use the strength of your arms to hug everything in closer to your chest. And then soften. Use your hands on your lap to push your knees away from your chest. Lift your feet up level with your knees. So you have a 90 degree bend at the ankle, 90 at the knees, 90 at the hips, arms nice and straight. And then bring your legs together even more. Make sure your thighs are strapped together, nice and snug and secure. So there's no air space between your legs. And now you're gonna bring that whole situation back in towards your chest. And it's not gonna come as close as it did just a moment ago, but give it time. Give it a few breaths. Use the weight of your legs, the weight of your arms to soften those hip joints. Keep breathing. Try to find breath space. Breathe into your belly. Breathe into your back ribs. Breathe into your side ribs. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Try to take as deep breaths as you can. And then release. And you can untie. To unbuckle that belt. And then one knee at a time, bring both knees into your chest, rock a little bit from side to side, spread your backside out on the ground. And come to neutral. I'm gonna set your left foot down, take the belt around the bottom of the right leg, right foot, extend that right leg straight up towards the sky. take the belt and loop it around the back of your hands a couple times. That way you'll be able to hold on without aggravating your carpal tunnel. Now to get this uh, pose to release your back, not just your leg, but your lower back as well, you wanna let the leg go super straight. Let out enough slack so that the leg is straight. And you end up with the leg perpendicular to the floor, straight up and down vertical. So we're not trying to put it behind the head. We're trying to get it straight and plugged into the pelvis. So the entire weight of that leg translates into your hips. This is your right leg in the air. You really wanna feel weight in the middle or lower portion of that right buttock. Now your left leg can get involved. You're gonna press out through the inner left heel, stretch that left leg straight pressing the brakes here. Press hard through that left heel, foot flat. Shoulders relaxed away from your ears, still breathing into that posture backpack. So looking at this right leg, if you look at it like the needle on a old fashioned gas gauge. Right now you're at half a tank, half a tank of gas. Transfer that belt, both ends of the belt, into your right hand. So this is your right leg in the air. You're gonna hold on with just the right hand. Hold fairly close to the foot, but keep that leg still straight up and down. So maybe your shoulder lifts away from the floor a little bit, but the leg stays straight up and down. Inhale. Exhale, pull your tummy in, twist your tummy to the left, 
as you let that right arm and right leg open out to the side. So notice my left hand, I'm actually hitchhiking to help keep that left shoulder down on the ground. I'm twisting my tummy to the left so that I'm nice and skinny and maybe this hitchhiking thing will work out. Right leg open out to the side. Now this left leg, the one that's down on the ground, it's actually still involved in this pose. Take that left leg, squeeze it in towards midline. You gotta pee. Hold that left leg to midline. You're gonna keep squeezing that left leg in towards midline, pulling your tummy in, hitchhiking that left shoulder onto the floor, hitchhiking your left thumb out to the side as you breathe. And then with a good strong exhalation, pull in that pelvic floor, squeeze your tummy to your spine and haul that right leg back up. Left leg come, left hand comes up to switch the grip. Hold on now with your left hand, right arm opens out to the side, abs are strong. You can take your right elbow, jam it into the ground to help you get that right hip up and over all the way across into a nice twist. that left leg is still active. It's still squeezing towards midline. So maybe your left knee is off the mat. This left leg is squeezing straight in towards midline, like you're wearing a very short skirt. And as if you were wearing a very short skirt, you're also going to take this top hip and swing it away from your chest. Try to preserve your modesty here. Side waist is nice and long. Doing your best to breathe. And then you get to haul that leg all the way back up. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to go slow, take it in stages, even though you know what's coming up next. Take it easy, move like you're daydreaming. No rush. So I first start by hugging my knees in towards my chest, rocking a little bit from side to side. And then I set the right foot down and belt that left foot, take the left leg straight. Loop the belt around the back of your hands a couple times. Drop your shoulders away from your ears, have a pillow underneath your head and work that left leg straight directly over your hips. So the weight of the leg plugs into your pelvis and spreads out across your backside. Taking a few breaths to settle into this one. And after three or four long, slow breaths, now it's time to involve the other leg. So take that right leg, kick out through the heel, press stop, press the brakes, press hard through that right heel, squeeze that right leg in towards midline. Check in your shoulders, relax, still breathing into your back ribs. And that leg is at half a tank of gas. And then you're gonna transfer both ends of the belt into your left hand. Right arm opens out to the side, left leg opens out to the side. Again, you can hitchhike that right shoulder blade underneath you. Hitchhike that right arm open out to the side. Also twist your belly to the right. So your chest is open, your tummy is pulled in nice and strong. Trying to shift weight to the right, even as that left leg opens out to the side. And this other leg that's not doing anything, the right leg squeezes, sweeps in towards midline. And you do your best to breathe. So 
sometimes the hardest part is moving. So from here, tummy strong, squeezing in towards midline, bring that leg up, switch hands. You can use your left elbow to help you lift that left hip up and over, all the way over down to the ground. The right leg is still active, still squeezing that right inner thigh towards midline. Maybe the right knee comes off the ground. The pinky toe blade edge of the right foot digs into the floor. You're doing your best to breathe. Maybe fidgeting your shoulders a little bit so they lie a little flatter. Pushing this top hip away from your top shoulder so you have a long waist. And then from here, I'm just gonna keep rolling on over to my right side and keep rolling on over to a seated position. And I'm gonna build myself a little pedestal. So I've got my two blocks and what I call butt cheek configuration. So I've got one block for each cheek and they go right there in the middle of the mat. And I might consider covering them up with a pillow to give myself even more height. Now I'm gonna get funky with the belt. I'm gonna sit up on top of my pedestal. Take the legs nice and wide. I have my belt nearby. Gonna reach out, spread everything out. Spread your sit bones. Find yourself perched on the very front edge of whatever you are sitting upon. Your legs nice and straight. And bend that right knee in. Bring the heel in towards the pubic bone and point the toes. I'm going to roll my heel out. So if I push the heel away and then keep working up, I can roll the calf meat out and maybe get my pedicure completely down on the pack blanket or mat. So roll it out. And then that left leg out to the side, I'm going to lasso the foot with my belt. Shoulders up, back, and down. This is my left hand. I'm gonna loop it around the back of my hands a couple times to work my hand closer to the foot. Shoulders down, chest lifted. I'm gonna lean over. So I'm gonna pull on this belt to tuck in my side ribs like I'm getting tickled, tucking in those side ribs, leaning over. Letting my right side stretch a little bit up towards the sky. I'm stretching up, not over, reaching up, reaching up, reaching up. And as I reach up, think about anchoring this left hip down. Imagine somebody came by to stand on this left thigh bone, pushing it down nice and heavy. So let the weight of this arm travel all the way into the top of that right hip. And then with an inhale, come up. We're not done on this side. That was just to help anchor the hip. Shoulders up, back, and down. And now I'm gonna let this left arm shoot out. Palm is up, down the leg. Maybe holding on to the big toe. If I am holding on to the big toe, I flip my palm up like I'm asking for money. And I keep turning my hand over so my thumb dives down. And maybe I can hold on to it with my pinky finger on top. Okay, I flip my whole hand around. And that helps me to get my shoulder underneath. And head hangs. If you're not quite holding onto the foot, you're holding onto the belt. That same shoulder situation, palms turned up. Head hangs. Now this other hand, that would be your right hand. Raise it in the air. Wave it like you just don't care, but you do. So let's turn that palm towards your head and bring that arm right alongside your ear. And breathe. Try breathing into those back ribs, those side ribs, like you still have that posture backpack on. Uh, 
And then with an inhale, come all the way up. We'll do that same thing on the other side. So I'm going slow because these preliminary stages are important. You really wanna settle your base. Really get lots of weight through your hips before you take off into a side stretch. If all you do is just pure side stretch, there's a tendency for the hip to not be anchored and this whole side floats up and you cheat yourself out of a little, uh, of the bit of the side stretch. You cheat yourself out of like, getting of a full complete side stretch. Then I recommend sitting on enough stuff so that the front of your hips are open, nothing is getting jammed. Gonna swing that left leg in, turn the toes under, press the heel out, roll the flesh on your calf out. So the knee comfortably bends, everything comes in here nice and snug. Right leg out to the side, and lasso the foot. And come back to that. Um, lasso the foot, you're gonna loop it around the back of your hands a couple times hold on nice and tight. And then you're going to crunch your side body. This is once a stage that people leave out all the time. It's this crunching thing. So take a moment to crunch and still pull on the belt. You can get even more crunch right here in the side ribs. You're leaving a lot of the weight of your torso settled over your midline. So you can stay, keep this hip anchored. Left arm comes up, straight up. And you can let your head hang. As you reach up through that left arm, let weight settle into this left hip bone. You can breathe into that left hip. And then soften. And now we'll go for the more classic version of this thing. So either you're gonna hold on close to the foot or you're gonna reach out towards the foot. And as you do so, ask for money, dip your thumb, hold on with the pinky finger up, shoulder tucked underneath. And then your left arm comes up and overhead alongside your ear and breathe. And let your left hip be heavy. And inhale, come all the way up. And release. This is gonna turn into one of my favorite um, twists. I'm going to go at a slight angle. So you're still sitting on your toys and you have plenty of space out in front of you and you have your belt nearby. Legs out in front. Spread everything else out wide. Kind of butt walk, wiggle walk to the very front edge of your blocks, the very front edge of your sit bones. Legs are straight out in front. Belt goes around the bottoms of your feet. You flare your toes, kind of like you're wearing Barbie stilettos. You're gonna press into the balls of your feet a little bit. Shoulders are up, back, and down. You can loop the belt around the back of your hands so you can hold on without a death grip. Drop your shoulders and pull your chest through your arms. Draw your armpits down away from your ears. Your armpits, shoulder blades ribs down, front ribs tucked in slightly. Think about that lampshade. So tucking in those front ribs, head is balanced straight out the top of your spine and let the weight of your spine translate all the way down to your tail. Let your inner thighs start to drop down towards the ground. And let your thigh bones get very heavy Now we're gonna belt the thighs together. So if you have two belts, great. You can use that second belt to wrap your thighs together. Again, this is not to cut off circulation, but it is to keep you from spreading your legs. 
So we did this with our child's pose. We bound the thighs together and then I encourage you to press your upper thighs wide or you get to actually tie your upper thighs together here. So you have something to press against. Shoulders up, back and down and really spread those sit bones out. I'm simultaneously pressing my thighs wide, pressing my inner thighs down as I spread the meat off the bones and rock a few times side to side. Legs are super straight. If you have that second belt, you can put it once again over the balls of your feet. Move the belt around the back of your hands. Shoulders back, chest lifted. Drawing shoulder blades down, drawing your armpits down. Bring a nice long neck. Tucking your front ribs in. Balance the weight of your skull over the tip of your tail. Let your sit bones widen. Press your inner thighs down towards the ground. Press out against the band around your thighs. Knees run long. Pulling back on the bottoms of your feet. And then release. Now we're gonna take it into a deeper forward fold. We're on our way to my favorite twist, but we have to prep a little bit more. So I took the belt from my thighs, slid it down to my calves. And you wanna hold your legs hip width apart. So I've got space between my feet. I'm not slamming my knees together, feet are flat. Shoulders up, back and down. You can press into your fingertips, lift your chest up. Draw your armpits and shoulder blades down. Tuck your front ribs in. Balance your head directly over your tail. Let your butt spread out as you press your inner thighs down. Press out on those upper inner thighs. Feet flex flat. And then begin to hinge forward. Try to hinge forward. Pressing your inner thighs down, pressing out against the belt. Now you might be able to reach out, lasso your feet or hold on to your feet. If you are holding on to your feet, consider taking your hands over top of your feet so you get a bit of a toe stretch. And with your hands over the top of your feet, think about pulling that Dracula cape up and over. Let your side ribs stick out. Wide and broad in your upper back. There's no good place for your head, so feel free to drop your head. Shoulders hike up around your ears. If I drop my head, my mic sounds funny. So go ahead and drop your head through your arms and hike your shoulders up around your ears. Trying to find yourself with a head in a hole, kind of like a cocoon. And then to come out of this, use your hands. Drop your hands to the ground. Press yourself up using your hands. Try keeping those back muscles relaxed. So that's an intense back stretch, in case you didn't notice. And now for my favorite twist. One of my favorite twists. So legs go straight out in front. And cross your, your right ankle on top. Shrug your shoulders back and down. Press your fingertips into the ground. Sit up nice and tall. If this is your right foot on top, you're going to take your right shoulder, shrug your right shoulder up, back, and down like you have that posture backpack on. There's a tendency for your front ribs to tip out, so tuck your front ribs down. Pull in your front ribs, pull in your belly, twist to the right so that you can take your left arm up and diagonal across. Flex your feet. Use the back of your hand around the outside of your thigh. You're going to press your fist against your thigh, your thigh against your fist. So fist against thigh, thigh against fist. So you can spread your upper thighs, but they're not going anywhere because your ankles are crossed. So that you can tip your pubic bone down, sit to the front edge of your sit bones, maybe twist a little bit more. 
Front ribs are tucked in like you're getting tickled. Twisting a little bit more. And then release. And let's switch. Cross that left ankle on top. Shoulders up, back and down, backside spread out. If this is your left leg on top, this is your left shoulder, hitchhike up, back and down. And right arm comes up. Diagonal across. Put that fist on the outside of the thigh. Push your fist against your thigh, your thigh against your fist as you press your inner thighs down as you sit up nice and tall on the front edge of your sit bones. Tuck in those front ribs. Both elbows are bent as you twist to the left. And then unwind. All right, you have the option of repeating exactly what we just did or getting a little bit more complicated with a belt. The belt goes around the bottom of your feet. And it doesn't have to be fancy buckled, but a nice loop around your feet. This makes it so it doesn't fall off. It's easier to hold that belt and slip off your feet as readily. Right leg on top. Right shoulder shrugs up, back and down. Hitchhike that right shoulder blade onto your back, lift your chest up. Left hand is going to start working its way down that belt. Want to work the twist first as much as you can. Soften your front ribs, press your inner thighs down, sit up even taller. To get a little bit more twist, you have that belt in your left hand. You can feed that belt around the small of your back to your right hand. So I took that belt around my back and handed it to my right hand. I'm still twisting. Shoulders back, chest lifted. Pressing your thighs wide, flexing your feet flat, turning your chest, sitting on the very front edge of your sit bones. And start sliding that left arm, your left hand to the outside of that Thigh, press a little bit wider, get a little bit more twist. Turn your head a little bit further. Front ribs tuck in a little bit more. Thighs press down and apart even more. Ankles crossed nice and tight. Feet flexed flat. And on one. We're going to hold the legs as it is, and we're going to twist the other way. So this is the right leg on top. You're going to take your right arm across. Shrug your left shoulder up, back, and down. And we'll just do a quick counter twist on this side. Twist to the left. It's a soft twist. We're not using a whole lot of leverage here. And release. And now we'll cross the ankles the other way. Left leg on top. Left shoulder shrugs up, back, and down. Right hand holds on close to the foot. Twisting. Feet flex flat. Shoulders down away from your ears. Armpits pulling down away from their ears. Front ribs tuck in. Elbows bend. Twist a little bit more in the torso. As you press your inner thighs down, as you sit the front edge of your sit bones, as you press your thighs out, and they can't go anywhere because they're crossed. And you twist a little bit more. You once again, take inventory of your body, you run through all those different segments, all those different sections. And then soften, and we'll do a soft counter twist, just twisting the other way, just for a breath or two. I love that twist because it really anchors your pelvis. Your hips go nowhere. It's all torso twist, which is something we don't get very often. All right, now untangle, make your way down to the ground. 
And you have the option of putting yourself into a, another bound pose or uh, bound Shavasana, Ardha Shavasana, constructive rest pose. So you can sprawl out, flat out on the ground if you like, or tie your thighs together one more time. Tying your thighs together will allow the weight of your thighs to press into your lower back, spreading out your hips even more. After that deep forward fold, this is a nice neutralize, a, a deep twist and forward fold. This is a nice neutralizing variation. So you can tie your thighs together, not to cut off circulation, just to hold them together. And then you take your feet about as wide apart as your mat, turn your toes in and let your knees be held together by the belt. So this is constructive rest pose. Or you can just spread out flat out on the ground. And find your breath. Put a pillow underneath your head. If swallowing is uncomfortable or difficult, I recommend a pillow under your head. Go ahead, swallow. Clear your throat. <clears> throat> Find the back base of your throat. And as you breathe in and out through your nose, let your breath scrape across the base of your throat, creating a whispering ocean-like sound. This is Ujjayi Pranayama, the victorious yoga breath, the breath with sound. By practicing Ujjayi Pranayama, you become victorious over your scattered thoughts, victorious over your fidgety body. And you can surrender to the support of the earth. Rest in peace. Melt into the earth. Feel the weight of your hips spreading out across the ground. Find your breath in that posture backpack one more time, breathing into that space between your shoulder blades. Breathing not only into your back body, but your side ribs all the way up into your armpits. Still breathing out against that posture backpack. Taking deep, full, chesty breath. And notice if you're able to take deep, full, chesty breaths without unsticking yourself from the ground. Take deep, chesty breaths, keeping your spine relaxed, supported on the earth. So taking deep, chesty breaths that expand your chest, not just flex your spine. <clears throat> 